Hello, I'm Ken Scribner, a senior consultant for WinElect, a company that specializes in debugging services, custom software development, and general consulting for Windows applications. Today I'd like to talk about using a control template to replace the visual tree of control in Silverlight 2.0. Well, let's begin by creating a brand new Silverlight 2.0 application and using Visual Studio 2008. I'm going to give the application the name Button Demo. And it really doesn't matter whether I use a website or web application project. I prefer web application projects, so I'll select that. And Visual Studio will then create all of the artifacts necessary for the Silverlight 2.0 application. And it will bring up our page.xaml file in the editor, which is where we're actually going to provide the content that is shown to our users. However, we're going to want to create a brand new control template. In this case, let's say for a button. To do that, I'm going to open my application.xaml file. And to that, I'm going to add a new style element. A new style element is going to have a key value, which is how we're going to name it. And we'll name this style fancy button. And then it's going to want to know what type of control it is we're going to target. We're going to target the button control. Since we'll be working with attached properties, we're going to add a setter element. And it's going to want to know what property we're going to modify. In this case, we're going to modify the template. Of course, we're going to modify the value. Now we're going to put down a control template. And this is where we're going to begin to replace the visual tree for a button. For the control template, we're going to target the button, control. And inside this element, inside the control template element, we're going to replace the actual content of the button with whatever it is we want. It could be an animation, it could be another control, it could be anything. In this case, I'm going to use the, the typical example you see of a rounded button using an ellipse. I'm going to provide a gradient to the ellipse to give it kind of an interesting specular effect, like there, it's kind of a rounded button with the light hitting it at an angle. To start, I'm going to place a grid element, because we're going to wrap all this in a grid. And I'm going to place an ellipse on that grid. Now, the ellipse, we're going to want the ellipse to be as large as the control area for the button. So we're going to give it a width, but instead of just specifying one, we're going to use that width and height that are passed into the button when it is actually laid down in the XAML file. And we do this by applying a template binding. And we bind to the property that is going to come into our control, in this case width. The ellipse will then take the width that is bound to. We're going to do the same for the height. And there's our ellipse. Now we're going to fill our ellipse with a radial gradient. We give it a gradient origin of, and this will place a little specular dot into the upper left corner of the ellipse. And we're going to give it some gradient stops. We'll make it a green ellipse, green ellipse with a little white specular dot. Now what this does is it provides us with a background for our button. Our background of our button is going to be this green ellipse that is going to be the width and height of the button that's passed in. What we've not done is provided for any other content, the animations, controls, or even just simple text. 
In this case, I'm going to provide simple text. I'm going to do that using something known as a content presenter. And since I'm interested in text, I'm going to want to override any font size property coming into the button. And I'm again going to do that using the template binding. So whatever font size comes in, we're going to use that. We're also going to use whatever content comes in. And since I'm going to want the text that we're going to pass in to be centered, I'll add a, add a vertical and horizontal alignment. And this is everything we need to actually override the button, the typical button visualization, by providing a gradient filled ellipse, which will be green with a little specular effect, and whatever content we pass in. So now the question would be, great, how do we use that? Well, we begin by going back to our button.xaml file. And we're going to give it a width and a height. Oh, width of say 200, something we can see. With a height of 200 and 100. We're going to provide for a new font size. We'll just make the text larger. And we're going to pass in as content some text. Hello world. Now here's the trick. We're going to provide a style. And we're going to do that using a static resource. And the name of the static resource is the key that we gave to our style, which was fancy button. And notice once we do, we now have a green lips backed button with the content, hello world. Let's save everything and compile. We should compile. We do. I'm going to come down to my web application project and I'm going to select my test page. And let's see if the test page actually shows up with the button. Ah, and indeed it does. So now we have a button. Now I'm clicking the button. Can't really tell, but I am clicking the button. Notice that you don't see any depression or anything like that. If you want any of those types of artifacts, you're going to want to have to animate the button when it's clicked. To do that, you need to add storyboards and such, but that's a topic for another video.